My name is Janis Arviloma. My name is Murat Teveji. And this is Opta Fidelity Test Corner. We are right here at Display Week. We have 140 companies here from, from all over the world and also many different dif display technologies. But of course what we are most interested in is the AR, VR displays and waveguides. So Murat, you have been walking around. What would you like to highlight from the Display Week event? Yeah, so my main interest is mainly uh, AR displays uh, during this event. So when I looked around here, I saw, for example, a couple of different technologies to manufacture AR waveguides. So one of them uh, is from uh, Switzerland. It's a company called Ulita. So they have their own technology called uh, Displacement Tableau uh, photo Lithography. So we are here at the Ulita stand. I have Kelsey here. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Welcome. So what does Ulita do? That's a great question. So Ulitha is a lithography equipment provider. Uh, we specialize in tools that have a mask-based uh, interference approach for creating highly reliable, low-cost, um, scalable, periodic structures for our photonics customers. Okay, and then, so OptoFidelity is in a testing business and we test waveguides. So I guess you guys also use this process to make waveguides. That's, That's right. One of the, yeah. Yes, one of our largest applications is augmented reality waveguides. Uh, our tools are very good uh, at producing waveguides uh, in that they have a very large single exposure field. So you're able to print multiple waveguides at a time. You're able to fill a wafer of, of, uh, of, of waveguides. It uh, has very tight pitch control. Uh, it has um, very good um, uh, throughput. Um, all the things uh, that customers are looking for in order to have cost-effective devices in the end. Um, specifically, how Ulitha has uh, worked with OptiFidelity in the past is OptiFidelity has a, a slew of tools that are, so, that are designed for uh, ensuring that what is being manufactured on the waveguide is translating to the performance that the customers expect. And our, our piece of that is that we do the patterning that um, takes the customer's design and makes it in the manufacturing. Yeah, like for example, our waveguide GAT product, which basically measures the, the pitch and then the angle of the, of the uh, waveguide um, pattern. That's so right. That's one of the things that you probably have been using then in, in the production. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons our customers really like using uh, DTL-based waveguides is that our pitch accuracy is the best on the market. You know, we're able to measure, using OptiFidelity tools, accuracy of pitch down into the single-digit picometers uh, over our entire exposure field, which is over um, 140 millimeters wide. So a very, very large area, multiple devices, and have that uh, level of pitch accuracy is really incredible. Correct, and then that is the one key metric if you want to have good image quality. You really have to have those dialed in really yes. well. Yeah. Yes, you have to have very tight pitch control, and not just within device, but as you scale from 6 inch to 8 inch to 12 inch wafers, you need to have that level of accuracy on all of the devices that are printed. Correct, yeah. But hey, thank you for coming to the show. It was good to talk to you. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Take care. And another sure. one was uh, from the Netherlands, a company called Morphotonics. So they have a technology for large area nano imprinting. So pretty much they can do any type of wafer sizes and any type of displays, but they can also do normal AR uh, waveguides. Yeah. Okay, I'm here at Morphotonics uh, booth. I have Erhan here. Welcome to the show. Welcome to our booth. Well, thank you. So you guys uh, do these. So what are these and, and what do you actually do? So we are a company based out of the Netherlands called Morphotonics. Uh, we do large area nano imprinting tools. So we make the machines that can replicate structures from 500 micron down to 50 nanometers in large substrates up to Gen 5, which is one meter square plus. So by that, we can make them for AR waveguides, for 3D displays, anti-glare screens, all kinds of display optics. Okay, and then I'm sure that the people behind the camera, they are wondering, what does nano imprinting mean? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> so essentially, there's obviously the word printing in it, uh, but it's nano and micron scale replication of textures. It doesn't necessarily have to be optical textures. It can be non-optical textures as well. Ability to precisely replicate uh, a texture from a master 
into a product. So it's basically like physical stamping of it, the structure. It is stamping kind of. and with, we use, in our case, UV curing to cure the uh, resin onto a substrate to create the structure. Got it. And then you can go all the way up to, did you say one meter? Well, half a side. meter square, one yeah. meter square. And this is where uh, the advantage comes in to produce things like AR waveguides in much larger areas beyond wafer scale. And on that note, we have actually done some work with OptoFidelity to essentially show the possibility of large area non imprinting, where you guys uh, helped us measure and qualify and show uh, how good of replication we can do. As you said, um, we open the field, we have testers to test the quality of the imprinting and then also test the image quality of the, of the waveguides. So those, those tools that you have been now using to check the quality. Exactly. The, we yeah. work with your team on showing that the AR waveguides that we have replicated on our machines for larger and other imprinting can perform as well as any or even better than any kind of other method of replicating. Correct, yeah. And also sounds like if you can make such a large areas, that means that the, the value, I mean the, the cost of one print must be fairly low. You're okay. absolutely correct. So as opposed to uh, replicating waveguides on a you know 12 inch uh, wafer, we can replicate uh, you know them on a one meter square. Correct, so you yeah. could put 10, 12, 15, 20 waveguides on a 12 inch wafer, but you could put 480, we have shown, on a Gen 5 size imprint, on a one square meter. So the cost per unit drastically It's much, much down. lower, yeah. It could literally be an order of magnitude difference. Yeah, correct, yeah. Okay, Rohan, it was really good to talk to you. Likewise. Yeah, Likewise. thank you for coming yeah, to the thanks. show. No, yeah. thanks for coming to our booth. Yeah. Dan, okay, for you. example, of course, uh, waveguides are not the only critical component of an AR display. You also need to have a projector. When I looked around here, I saw, for example, a company from Taiwan. It's called Cortronic. So they have Alcos and uh, also micro LED based uh, Pico projectors. So you could attach those to the waveguides and then you can actually create the virtual images just like that. Okay, we are here at Cortronic booth. I have Cece here. Welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah, thanks for inviting yeah, us. So, what does Cortronic do? In Cortronic, we do the projector design and the service, a speed focus on our audience service to almost all the customers. And uh, we, we involve on the DLP uh, projector over 20 years already. And right now, we are the most uh, largest one DLP provider. In, in the world. Yeah. And now we are not talking about movie projector, we are talking about something much more smaller. Yes, that's right. So right now we have to do our business, so especially for the air gases. So you can see a several example here. Let me, yeah, let me raise this up so the people in the camera can see. So this is the actual projector unit. Yes, yeah. a tiny one. Really tiny, yes, yeah. Yes, very tiny. <laughs> so this is our base on the DLP, and then we have another new one based on the micro LED. Oh, Even that is really, tiny. really tiny. Yeah. 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 I think I need to get a close up of this one, but, but yeah, it's extremely small. So, yes. so this basically in the waveguide displays, this basically goes here, yes, for example, the right. temple. Yes. And right then right. It, it injects the, the light inside the waveguide. Yes, that's right. So we are looking for very efficient optical engine and also keep it on some tiny in size. Yeah. And then how do you make sure that the image quality of the projector is oh, good? I think that right now is the key issue of our whole customer. So because uh, for AI it's a new business. So every people want to make sure the resolution, the color, uniformity, and even more detail in engineer spec like the, uh, how the uh, optical axis will be shift and rotation. So we are looking uh, for the best the possible uh, maturity supplier, for example, like optical validity. You provide the most of the best way and the solution and the concept to provide the metrology equipment and the method. So we are looking at the approach with an open fluidity to see any possibility we can go for next step and can go help the industry can grow up successfully. Yes. And we definitely want like to work with you guys. Yes, so, so yeah, basically we could measure the image quality of the of the projector itself yes. or then the fully assembled product. So, That's right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, CC. thank you for coming to the show. It was good to talk to you. When I looked at, for example, system level brand owner companies, they actually have the product with their brands. I didn't find uh, so many. I only saw uh, Magic Leap. So Magic Leap is an uh, American company. So they have a really good product. It's called Magic Leap 2. That is the latest edition of their product. 
So it's an AR waveguide. It's a see-through AR waveguide-based uh, display solution. So I think they have a very cool demo over their stand. So if you happen to visiting the event, I think these three companies are particularly important for AR uh, display enthusiasts. And of course, don't forget to also visit our booth because we have also ways and tools to test any type of uh, components and also system level testing. So this display week, so we have many different display technologies here. But in the spring, we had the SPIE event, which was the mostly AR, VR uh, displays. Correct. So I guess here we can't find that many of, of those companies because they basically kind of focus on that spring event more. That's true. Display week has been traditionally for uh, flat panel displays like the TVs, uh, laptops and mobile phones. And here, for example, when I looked at the big names here like Samsung and also LG uh, and also other, uh, other large uh, name companies, they have really cool new TVs, for example. They have micro LEDs, really, really big sizes. So they, have, are, they are demonstrating those over their uh, boots. Yeah. Mm, got it, yeah. And then we are now here demonstrating our stuff, which is of course the testers. And the biggest thing is now our production IQ tester that we are launching in this event. And I'm in actually now uh, interview Jonas, our product manager, and let's check the interview with him. Yeah. Okay, I have Jonas here. Jonas is our product manager for our production IQ tester. And this is a big day for you, Jonas. You, so we just launched your product. Indeed, yeah. It, it's been an exciting day. So my first product at OptoFidelity and quite, quite a big and important product for the future of the AR business, I think. Yeah, and then we are here in a display week in San Jose. It's buzzing with people. Has many people stopped by at our booth and asked about the product? Uh, I, I think quite many, and I also saw a couple of familiar faces here as well, so it, it has been a busy event for us. Nice, nice. And then we do have the Waveguide IQ product that is steered towards the R&D, and now this product is more for the mass production, so what are the differences? Why do two different products? So uh, the dif differences between them uh, for the VG IQ is of course meant for the R&D. Uh, to be a flexible system and uh, kind, of get, kind of getting the precise measurements out of the different, different type of R&D waveguides. But with the production IQ, we wanted to make it a lot more simpler, a lot more affordable. So you have a higher throughput and you can kind of cost effectively scale up multiple systems for that. Yeah. But there's also, also the similarity between there. So we are using the exact same metrology that we have there presented. So, so that would be the can, uh, opto eye lens. That would be the opto eye. So we can correlate the measurements from the R and D phase directly into the manufacturing. You measure the uniformity in the R and D. You can then measure the same uniformity in the manufacturing phase as well. Mm. So you have correlating kind of con consistent results all through the development chain. Yeah, and that is really important. When I, I have been working with these big customers here in Silicon Valley. When you do those dry runs in the proto builds, you want to make sure that you are able to find the right limits for your for your key metrics, and then in order to, to those limits to also work in the in the MP, you need to have the same uh, metrology. Exactly. So. From the R and D, you first find the metrics critical to quality, identify them out of the many metrics you can have, and then take just the key ones and go with that to the manufacturing phase, and screen out based on those. Hmm, correct. And then basically now with this product family, we are able to do that and deliver to the customer. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. As exactly. you heard from Jonas, we have our new product IQ tester right here in Display Week. Come to our booth, check us out. We have also other testers and we have our guys here to tell you what other stuff we do. So Display Week, we still have till Thursday. Yeah, so we have two more days to go and we already had a very good start. I think that the turnout will be uh, really good. I've seen that so many people coming from overseas, especially, especially from the APEC region. So if you're a display enthusiast or generally a tech enthusiast, I think that you should stop by Display Week, which is happening in San Jose, California. So see you guys in this Display Week.